I better hold this. I bet, see how that's hanging out off, off the water right there? Mm. I better move that. There's liable to be a big and come get that and just jerk my rod in. I better move it in the boat. I feel like we're in the land of Jaws. Hey guys, welcome back to Project E. I'm up north and I'm gonna try to break this, this northern natural lake down. You know, I've been out here a little bit this morning, caught a few fish doing different things. And uh, you know, I'm just gonna show you guys all this footage and I'll just show you what I think of what goes through my mind when I'm approaching one of these natural lakes. Come on, follow along, let's go. You know, coming from the south and being raised in the south and, and having creek channels and creek bends and big long points and, and all those things that a man-made lake has, you didn't have them up north. So I struggled breaking down these natural lakes. So we came today and we're going to start right here on this screen. So if I just take my unit here and I put it on full chart mode, I'm going to zoom out. And this is a, a typical natural lake up, up north. Now. This map I have right here is the uh, Lowrance map. I, I all the time run both my Navionics and my Lowrance. The Navionics doesn't have contours on this particular lake, so I'm just running the Lowrance. But when you look at this map, you know, I, I notice some really peculiar features on it. You know, I've got a really big point. If I move my cursor right there, you know, I got a really big bar that runs across. You know, this is all uh you know 10 12 foot of water it comes all the way across here you know all the way across this bar is a uh, uh, pretty shallow water that to me really really stands out you know if i look right here at, at this spot right here another bar another point you know another point but it doesn't have a flat on it and that's something that i have found is different up north is i need flats you know these fish they like flats so i'm gonna idle around on some of these spots and then try to, you know, pinpoint them a little bit more. Here we go. We're idling up on this point right here, uh, this big bar that's across the middle of this lake. You know, I've got my trail in yellow so I can see it. I've zoomed it in quite a bit. So, you know, we've got 10 feet. I'm starting out here in 34 feet or something, just crazy amount of, uh, but I got all kinds of bait. When I mean, you look right there, that's all bait. Cool lake though, good night. That has to be a big smallmouth right there above that bait right there. There's a fish right there, you can see on my 2D, you can see him right there on my uh, down scan. So I'm just kind of trying to remember these fish and it, it just seems to me like a lot of these fish are right there where I got a little patch of grass. You can see a little patch of grass right there. Oh, looky here. There is a spot that I would fish right there. Just bam, put a fish symbol waypoint on that right there. A couple more fish. You can see them here on the 2D. And I would say this, this grass right here is just like what we call perch grass. And, and that's just a short grass that grows a lot on these northern lakes. And uh, those fish tend to really, really get around it in my experience. There's one. Oh no, what do we got? It's so exciting to catch your first fish on a lake you've never been to. I don't know what to expect. I don't know what kind it is. I'm hoping it's a smallmouth. I've, I've read there's smallmouth in this lake and I think it is. That's a largemouth. Wow, I expected it to be a smallmouth. That's a good one though. Look how fat that sucker is. He ate that old Maxent flatworm. Huh, interesting. What is it? Is it a smallmouth or a largemouth? I think it's a largemouth. It's a big one, whatever it is. I seen him right on my Lowrance in 12 feet of water. I missed him the first time. It's a largemouth. Cool colored water right there. It's got some nice ones in it. I really expected to catch smallmouth. Come here, buddy. That's a fat one. I just can't get over how fat they are. Oh, he's got it. 
I love seeing them on my screen <laughs> and pitching back there and catching them. What kind is this? What do we got? I just drifted over. Another largemouth. <laughs> Dead gum largemouth. I'm wanting to catch me a smallmouth and I'm catching big old tub largemouth. Come here, buddy. There's one. Oh my God. Big one. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, oh my God. Getting these clear lakes, <laughs> any of these swim little deals. Man, they can be just fish magnets because they're always out a little bit deeper. I think it's a large mouth. Is it a small mouth? I think it's a small mouth. I think it is. I think it is. Come here, buddy. Oh, it's a small mouth. It's a light color. It just doesn't give up. They just never, ever give up. Man, he engulfed that thing, too. Come here, come here, come here. My bait. I got him, I got him, I got him. Look at smallmouth, light colored in this lake. Where is my bait at? It's way down there. Maybe there's some other fish in there. I gotta get my pliers. So there is smallmouth in this lake. I love brown ones. He's got all those black specks in him. I wonder what that is. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Man, as deep as he ate that, it kind of tells me there's probably another one underneath that, underneath that dog. There's another one. Oh, I hadn't tightened my drag yet. So I started off this morning fishing deep, caught largemouth. I've come up shallow. I found some smallmouth. That's really what I wanted to catch. I just being from Oklahoma, you just you want to catch smallmouth. So we started off on that end of the lake, you know, and we fished a few spots. We caught caught a few fish, but I just all that wind's blowing this direction, and there's one flat right here on this end of the lake, you know, all the way at this end. In my mind, you know, it could push all that bait fish this direction. So uh, I'm gonna idle around on a little bit and see if we see some fish, some grass, something to catch a bass. Hey, that rhymes. There's a fish. Oh, it's a big one. I don't know what I got, but it's a big one. It stripped off a bunch of drag. What do I have? Big old large mouth. <laughs> Out here trying to catch small mouth and I'm catching large mouth. What is the deal? There's one. Oh, what do I got? <laughs> oh, it's coming to the top and it's a nice one. All right. Oh gosh, there's one. Man, that's such an awesome feeling when that rod just loads up. You know, I'm just winding that crankbait and all of a sudden it just stops. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I think I figured out the right crankbait. You know, we're sitting here cranking over this grass. It's just important to have the right crankbait that you don't get too deep. Oh no, look what I got. I got something that'll eat a bass. It is a giant, giant pike or muskie. Look at that thing. <laughs> it's a dead gum dinosaur. Holy smokes, I don't want to lose my bait, buddy. And they got nasty teeth. 
Oh, big old pike. We don't have these in Oklahoma. Look at this thing. Oh, oh, quit, 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 quit. Just let me get a hold of you. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a pike. That's a big old pike. These things got some teeth. Big old teeth. That's one thing when you're throwing that crankbait. And pike like it too. I wonder how old a fish like that is. A big old pike, oh, isn't it? Look at him. Thanks, buddy. There, right, here he goes. Back down to the deep. All right, back to bass fishing. There's one. Oh, that's gotta be a bass. That was on the end of a long cast. Come here, baby. I don't think it's too big, though. Oh yeah, it's a bass. It's a bass, it's a bass. You don't ever know when you're up north, you might catch a big old pike. That just makes my day. It may not be a big one, but I still like it. One thing I do in this clear water like this, I'm, I'm gonna reel it a lot faster than I normally would. I don't want them to have a you know, just a lot of time to think about if I'm gonna eat that thing or not. You know, the water's warm. I'm just gonna reel it really quick. I'm gonna make those fish react. Almost like burning the spinner bait, you know, but I'm, oh, the grass. But I'm doing it with a crankbait. There's one. Most of those bites are coming right when that crankbait's just first getting down to the grass. I guess those smaller ones are. Man, they are chunky fish. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Early in my career, you know, I really struggled with natural lakes because they're just different. I mean, there's grass can be everywhere. There, there might not always be a hard edge or, or it's just, oh, I got a fish. I got to catch this fish. Hold on a second. And I've learned through the years, you just have to cover water. There's just no substitute for covering water. And, and really that's a big part of it. You know, I really pay attention to birds. You know, when I pulled up here this morning, there was birds here. Uh, it's a nice one. I love it. And fish, like these fish here up north, they will, I mean, I, I've caught them dirt, dirt shallow. And I've caught them out really, really deep. So it's one of those things that when you get up here, you just have to cover all aspects of the water column. You know, this place here, you know, obviously it's good because I felt like there was a lot of wind here. There were some birds here when we pulled up. Kind of helped made my decision a little bit easier. But uh, covering water is, is one thing that I've learned up north on these natural lakes is really, really critical. One other thing I've learned, you know, up north is there's always a certain grass. There's lots of different grasses up here. But it seems like to me there's always a certain grass that'll, you know, really focus with those fish. You know, you, you just, when you can key in on, on whatever grass that may be, uh, that can be really critical too. And it may be a stage the grass is in. Sometimes, you know, it could be that matted grass. Sometimes it could be the real sparse grass, all the same type, but, uh, it just boils down to, I think I just got to cover a lot of water on these lakes. Something else I've learned coming up, fishing up north, you know, back home, you know, like this cranking, like what, we've, what we're doing right now. So much of the time back home, I'm throwing this crankbait on a drop off, on a, on a really sharp drop. And I'm not saying they don't get on drops up here, but they're, I've, it was eye opening to me how they'd get up on the flats. You know, and that's what I've got right here is, is just a flat and it's just a real tapered flat. You figure out what depth they're in and then you fish that depth. They're not necessarily relating right to, to a drop off like they do back home. He's a jumper, jumper, jumper. Thank you, man. Hey, 
got it that time. I just had to slow it down. <laughs> it's so much fun. Oh, he's a good jumper too. <laughs> there is a pile of them right there. Come here, buddy. Come here, come here, come here. And that water's clear. It's a little bit bigger one. Come in here, come in here, come in here. Come in here. Oh, gosh dang it, I hate getting them on the card, but that is a fat one. Holy smokes, ouch. You've been caught before. All right. Thanks, man. Another big difference between, you know, when you, anywhere else I fish in the country, there's no shad in these lakes. I mean, there's just not shad at all. You know, and so much of, of what I've learned fishing was, was revolving around imitating a shad because that is a forage base for a lot of the fish, you know. So when I come up north, I think about perch, I think about bluegill. Uh, they have like a, like a shiner minnow up here. Uh, you know, so it's a little bit different. Don't, don't necessarily come up here throwing all the, the sexy shad colors that you would throw back home. You know, that's, that's not the case up here. They don't have it. That is one thing about coming up north. I mean, you can just catch so many bass. I mean, just 80 to 100 fish days are really, 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 really possible. You know, you think about it, a lot of the people up north, they don't fish for bass. They fish for walleye and muskie and pike and they just leave the bass alone. So that's one reason. The other reason, they got ice on their heads for four months out of the year. You know, when all of us are back home, we're beating on them bass, you know, 11 months and, and 30 days out of the year, you know, all but Christmas maybe. Uh, up here, they get a rest. Now I realize people ice fish, but you know, they're just fishing a little six inch hole when they're ice fishing. So I think that's another reason why it's so good up here and why it's so much fun. One thing I really enjoy about fishing up north is it's very visual. I mean, so much of the stuff that you fish up there, you know, you just see a dark spot in the water or, or a grass patch, you know, it's, there's a lot of visual stuff that, that you know, just di you know, makes it a little easier to catch those fish, especially when they're up shallow. All right, guys, after watching that, you know, I, I want to show you exactly uh, what I look for on Google Earth. And I'm going to give you three other key points that, that maybe I overlooked, uh, you know, or maybe I just want to hit on a little harder. For me, when I struggled, when I sat there and I said in the beginning of that video, man, I struggled when I came to Clear Lakes. One of the biggest things that I struggled about was the adjustment of clear water. You got to realize I was raised in the south and Man, if it was like that, you could see a bait that far, that was clear water for us. And going up north, that was a big thing to me. It's just like, wow, I can see bottom sometimes in 20 feet of water or even deeper if it was calm. You got to get over that. That's like the number one thing. Don't be scared of that clear water. That is the biggest advantage you have because those fish can see your bait that much further don't let it bother you. You know, I, I, I'll catch them burning a spinner bait, burning a crank bait, you know, still using 14, 17, 20 pound test on that spinner bait. So get over the cold water fear. It's an advantage, I promise you. Uh, the second thing is cover water and cover it a bunch. I mean, just when you find them, you'll find them, you know, and there's a lot of fish up there. Remember, when you go up north and you're fishing, there's a lot of fish. They're not overly educated. If you're not getting bit, it's because you're not where they're at. That's the biggest thing. Remember, 90% of the bass live in 10% of the lake. So keep going till you get to that 10%. That's the number two thing. Number three thing, ah, to narrow it down to three in that clear, it kind of goes with that clear water. Don't be scared to go shallow. I mean shallow. Like I can tell you back to a tournament at Lake Oneida. Tommy Biffle won it and he's flipping water that deep and it's crystal, crystal clear. I caught a lot of fish that week in water that deep and it was just amazing how clear it was. Undercut banks, really, really cool. Let's go over to Google Earth. I'm gonna show you the lake that I fished and you know, looking at it on Google Earth, it's kind of, man, it's just kind of, it's kind of, there's not a lot there that I can learn from Google Earth. You know, when I look at it here, you know, I've got this hump and this, this big series of shallow water across the middle 
uh, you know, and then we get over here to the, uh, the end of it where all that wind was blowing in and I started catching them cranking, um, picking that crankbait up and throwing over it. You can just see this big flat out here, but you know, that's one thing with Google Earth. Some lakes it works on great, some lakes it doesn't. So with that said, you know, this lake here, I, I didn't learn a lot from Google Earth. I, you know, just that there wasn't a lot. So that told me I didn't need to spend the time looking shallow for that magic deal. So, but if we zoom out, let's just take, for instance, let's zoom out to, I don't know, I'm gonna pick one here, Malax. Let's go to Malax. <clears throat> you know, a big natural lake. That's been one of the questions you guys have given me on the channel is that, man, it doesn't work on natural lakes. Well, it kind of does. One, the water's clear enough that you can see lots of stuff in the water. So when I zoom in here on, on, on Mille Lacs, and let's just pick this bay right here, this is one thing that, 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 that I notice, and, and maybe it's not so much the case here on Mille Lacs, but I guarantee it is on some lakes, and especially some of those lakes up in Minnesota, you know, that I'll see that you can pick up on Google Earth is ice ridges. You gotta think about all that ice, you know, all these lakes freeze over, that wind starts blowing once it starts breaking up and those big shelves start blowing into the bank and it just blows up an ice ridge. You know, it'll be rocks and sand, then it'll be a little bit deeper. Rocks and sand a little bit deeper. I can't tell you how many times in my career, like at Sturgeon Bay and those great lakes that those ice ridges hold fish. They'll be in those troughs, they'll be on top of them, they use them to spawn, they use them to feed. So, you know, that's one thing that I see right here on this Google Earth. You know, another thing that I see right here on, <clears throat> on Mille Lacs that, man, you would never know what's there, but look at this, look at this little canal back in here. You know, that's just not going to be something you're going to see running down the lake. You just will not trust me, guys. So I'd put a waypoint right there on that canal if I was there in a spawning event. Um, you know, another thing that I notice when I look at Google Earth, you know, on a natural lake that doesn't fluctuate a lot, you know, I've got water going out right here, but you'll see a lot of times, look at this little deep ditch right here. You know, you would not know that's up here unless you studied Google Earth, because if you're idling down this bank and you're idling right here, it's the same depth the whole way. You wouldn't know this hole is up there. So there are things that you can learn on Google Earth, even if your lake doesn't fluctuate, if the water's clear. Um, if the water, you don't have a lot of natural lakes where the water's muddy, but if it is, what I see on those lakes is points of grass, guts in grass, those kinds of things will help you in those natural lakes uh, maybe that you can't see in the water. So just, just because, you know, the, the question, what, what do I do, you know, on these natural lakes, <clears throat> you know, that don't fluctuate, you can still see stuff, don't give up on it. I've found many, many fishing holes. If I was to go up to the Great Lakes, I could show you some killer ones that I've seen here on Google Earth. Same thing with Champlain or, or Cayuga or Oneida. There's stuff there that you can see on those kinds of lakes. Um, even though they don't fluctuate. So guys, I hope it's helping you. Hit that subscribe button, man. I got a bunch of you guys watching this stuff that hadn't subscribed. It helped me a bunch of you to subscribe. And uh, man, we'll be doing it next week. Come back and uh, we'll be catching some more fish and having a good time. That's what it's all about. Appreciate you guys following along.